This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about Bitcoin Core's original sin. And this is in response to a comment from Jet Bikeable, who writes in yesterday's video where I was talking about Nick Zabel being worried about Bitcoin Core 30. Jet Bikeable writes, with all this controversy over op return, it just seems to me we're ignoring the earlier problem that facilitated inscriptions, namely making the size of a taproot script unlimited. Why was that done? It wasn't an accident that was exploited. It was a deliberate design decision with a quote unquote envelope, a data envelope, like op false, op if, op and if, arbitrary data can be placed inside that script. So why are we not talking about that problem? Op return is only one part of the problem. I can't find information online, but I'm assuming Luke has placed some cap on the taproot script size so they can't be exploited by spammers. Is that correct? Yes, it is correct. The uh, If you run Bitcoin knots, it does filter out inscriptions in various ways. Uh, Jet Bikeable goes on to say, Core is saying the phrase, quote unquote, already possible quite a lot. Ah, uh, yes, because they made it possible with this unlimited taproot script size. What am I missing here? There's so many moving parts here. I'm sorry to say, but it now seems that the core, that core has unfortunately been compromised. I think this is 100% correct. But before we talk about the quote unquote original sin of inscription spam, which is what this video is going to be about, first some brief background. Bitcoin Core blowing open op return filters in Core 30, which is the next software release. This must be viewed in the context of Bitcoin's cultural history and Bitcoin Core's historical approach to spam. Op return, as we've said many, many times on the channel, was originally provided in 2014 as a small concession, as a place for people to put very small amounts of arbitrary data on chain. We can see here from Bitcoin Core release version 0.9.0, op return and data in the blockchain. There's been some confusion and misunderstanding in the community regarding the op return feature in 0.9 and data in the blockchain. This change is not an endorsement of storing data in the blockchain. The op return change creates a provably prunable output to avoid data storage schemes. So this is something that Bitcoin Core, at least historically, has been interested in trying to stop arbitrary data storage schemes. Now in version 11, this op return size, the cap on it, which is also called data carrier, this was moved up from 40 bytes to 80 bytes. And this was, I believe, just about a year later in 2015. Yes, in July of 2015, whereas the original op return decision was in March of 2014. But now in 2025, Bitcoin Core 30 will completely uncap op return. It will uncap data carrier size. This means that relayed unconfirmed transactions will effectively be capped at 100,000 bytes thanks to another filter that's been there for basically forever, the max transaction size that's relayed by nodes by default. So here's a summary of this piece of the puzzle. We went from 40 bytes to 80 byte to 100,000 byte op returns in a decade. So for all those saying that we just need to quote unquote, let the free market work itself out when it comes to the issue of non-arbitrary data, you do recognize that when you change basic parameters of a protocol, it ends up changing how the free market around it works. If you're finding this video interesting so far, I just ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button, that does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So now it's time to talk about Bitcoin Core's original sin. We need to add the additional wrinkle that Bitcoin Core devs made another fundamental change to Bitcoin in 2023 when they modified the definition of data carrier size so that it would no longer cover arbitrary data that was present in a transaction input. So in any every Bitcoin transaction, you have an input and an output. On the left here is the input sending some Bitcoin to an address, and it looks like uh, sending it to two different addresses. There's no change uh, change address here. But we have the input on the left and the output on the right. And this is relevant to how inscriptions and op returns work. So inscriptions are done in transaction inputs. They're done on this side. That's where the data is embedded. Op returns are done in transaction outputs. So that would be on the right side here. The whole point of the op return concession in 2014 was to provide a small space, as we said, for arbitrary data on Bitcoin while still limiting its abuse. The definition of data carrier size, which controls how much arbitrary data can be included in a transaction, was kept intentionally broad so that it could be used to fight additional spam attacks in the future. So the original definition, definition of data carrier size from 2014 was, quote, maximum size of data in data carrier transactions we relay 
and mine. And this was changed as this this article from Stacker News that was put up by Ghost of Unhosted Marcellus. This was changed in version 26 by Bitcoin Core Dev Marco Falca. And it was changed to, quote, relay and mine transactions whose data carry, data carry raw script pub key is of this size or less. And script, script pub key is the nerd name for transaction output. So what they did was they changed this definition from a very general definition. They changed it to a much more specific one where data carrier size would only apply to the outputs of transactions. And they did this at a very important point in time when the inscription spam was just taking off. This post is from February of 2024. This is changing a fundamental definition and changing how people think about it. I'll put a link to this from Ghost, Ghost of Unhosted Marcellus. On the left, you can see the original the original definition of data carrier size, maximum size of data and data carrier transactions, we relay in mine. And on the right side, you can see the change. And as Ghost points out, now that people are starting to pay attention, it's probably a good time to remember that two years ago, Bitcoin Core devs officially, quote unquote, fixed the inscription exploit by redefining the meaning of data carrier size. People have compared this to, you go to the doctor with a broken bone, he takes an x-ray of your broken bone, and then he photoshops it, and that's how he fixed the bug that is your broken bone. But as Ghost summarizes here, they seem, Bitcoin Core devs seem to hate data carrier size for some reason, maybe because they want to fill the chain with garbage. So we know that data carrier size was never intended to cover only arbitrary data in transaction outputs like OpReturn. We know this for two reasons, just to summarize where we are. Number one reason, the definition of data carrier size was kept quite general. If 2014 Bitcoin Core devs had wanted to limit the applicability of data carrier size to transaction outputs only, they could certainly have specified so. But they left it much more general and wide open so that they could fix future exploits that were trying to load up Bitcoin with non-monetary data. Number two reason, using the OpReturn opcode as a prefix for embedding arbitrary data was rolled out by Bitcoin Core in the middle of a particular crisis that involved people abusing the blockchain with arbitrary data. And we've talked about this very important article from BitMEX before, the OpReturn Wars of 2014. This will give you some context. And this will also remind you that Bitcoiners and Bitcoin Core were able to drive Vitalik Buterin away from Bitcoin and he went to start Ethereum simply because he found that Bitcoin and Bitcoin Core devs were so hostile to spam and my how things have changed. So this is the context for op return and for data carrier size. And it's this historical context that makes Adam Back's historical revision revisionism here absolutely, absolutely laughable. This is a post from Adam from September 24th, 2025. If you read the original op return release notes from 2014, it's quite clear that data carrier size refers to op return payload. That's the same today. If you or others want to expand the data carrier size to cover other formats, notice he's not paying any attention to this bug that was never fixed, the taproot bug we've been talking about that was never fixed by Bitcoin Core, and instead they changed the definition. He's not talking about this. He's being very disingenuous. If you or others want to expand the data carrier size to cover other formats, it's okay to be honest and say that. It's, however, a rather bad idea to go down the heuristic direction, arms raise, and leads demands to actually censorship data, blah, blah, blah. It's not censorship. Filtering transactions and filtering out non-monetary non data has been done since 2014. And as Chris Guida points out here to Adam, yes, of course it refers to the op return payload because that was the only officially sanctioned method of storing ARB data at the time, and it was limited to 40 to 80 bytes, which means that was the limit for all officially sanctioned methods of arbitrary data storage. And as we said, this definition was left purposefully open. So here's what actually happened. Taproot shipped with a bug that failed to fix, that failed to limit data carrier size for taproot address transactions, in particular on the input side of things. And rather than responsibly reporting this bug to Bitcoin Core devs, Casey Rodimore exploited this bug for his own personal brand and told the whole world about it. To try to fight this attack on Bitcoin, Luke Dasher came up with a patch that stopped inscription spam from being relayed. A few months later, Bitcoin Core devs changed the definition, as we've discussed in this video, they changed the definition of data carrier size to exclude transaction outputs, I'm sorry, to exclude transaction inputs where the inscription spam sits. And then they used, this is the very important point, they used that modified definition to reject Luke's patch. So this is the patch he suggested, this is pull request 
uh, number 29187, witness scripts being abused to bypass data carrier size limit. And hopefully those words mean something more now, data carrier size limit, now that we've discussed this. Luke begins the PR by pointing out the data carrier size policy option is meant to limit the size of extra data allowed in transactions for relaying and mining. And he's citing the original definition there. Since the end of 2022, however, attackers have found a way to bypass this limit by obfuscating their spam inside of opfalse, opif. This is what the original question was talking about at the beginning of this video. Ob obfuscating their spam inside of opfalse, opif patterns instead of using the standardized op return. This remains under active exploitation to a degree very harmful to Bitcoin even today. And then he has a couple bug fixes for this and a number of paths to take. And then here is Gloria's response, and she closed this PR because it did not conform to the new definition of data carrier size. So she responds to Luke's statement, the data carrier size policy option is meant to limit the size of extra data allowed in transactions for relaying and mining. And again, that is the original opportune uh, definition, data carrier size definition from 2014. She quotes that and says, history of this config option suggests data carrier size is meant to limit the size of data in opportune outputs. So this statement is untrue. And notice she's using the definition on the right, which basically changes is the definition of data carrier size to apply only to transaction outputs, only to this side of a transaction rather than the other side. So they basically changed the definition and then Gloria used it to knack to disapprove this pull request. This is absolute, absolute corruption. This is a smoking gun. And it's where I would say all of our problems or most of our problems started, at least in this most recent crisis, changing the documentation. This is what Bitcoin Core did. They changed the documentation instead of fixing the bug and then use that change doc, changed documentation to reject an actual bug fix that Luke Dasher had put forth. All the Bitcoin Core devs, including Gloria, who were involved in this funny business, should have been defunded in 2024 when this happened. And if they had been, if the people in charge of grants at Brink, OpenSats, Chaincode Labs, etc., had been doing their jobs responsibly, we wouldn't currently be in this disastrous place. So that's the basic history of this. This is the wider historical context for the whole opportune debate, and you have to see it in this context, going all the way back to 2014 and what data carrier size used to mean, how it was revised, and how it was used to reject any fixes to this. Meanwhile, you have all these Bitcoin Core supporters who are quite active on the mailing list, on the GitHub, and are actively investing in these spam com companies. And they, of course, are pushing Bitcoin Core devs even further in this direction. So this is the real corruption. This is the real problem. And this is why we've been saying that there's a very good chance that Bitcoin Core is just completely compromised. Not going to be a video on Wednesday. I'll be traveling. Next video will be in two days from now on Thursday, God willing. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.